Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today we're gonna try a smoked rib experiment. We have two racks of ribs. One will be wrapped in foil and the other will be wrapped in peach butcher paper. And then we'll test the results. So follow me and let's turn up the taste. Look, nothing says summer like some ribs on the smoker, and that's just what we're gonna do today. In front of me, I have two trimmed pork spare ribs. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the nuts and bolts of trimming these things up. You can trim them, not trim them. Frankly, I don't even care. I do like them trimmed, um, and there's a lot of information on the internet about trimming those. Today, we're really gonna focus on a question. Namely, when you wrap ribs, which is best, foil, or this peach butcher paper right over here. Look, I've heard a lot of opinions on the internet about which is best. Frankly, I have both. I've tried both, but I've never put them side by side to see which is best. So that's what we're gonna do today. First thing we need to do is get these things seasoned. Now, I like to coat them with a little bit of yellow mustard. Now, I know that's really gonna upset some of you at home. Look, I've heard from award-winning competition barbecuers who use mustard. I've also heard from award-winning barbecue pit masters who don't use any mustard. They use vegetable oil or nothing at all. It really comes down to your personal preference. For me, I can't taste this mustard. I think it helps the seasoning stick, and so that's what I'm gonna go with today, but this isn't about how to season ribs. It's about the impact of the foil and the butcher paper on the final product. To season these things today, I'm gonna be using some rescue rub from our friends at Code 3 Spices. You can find this online at code3barbecuesupply.com. If you don't have this in your cabinet, we do offer a free recipe on our website for our flavor bomb pork rub. It goes really well with ribs and pulled pork, or frankly, use whatever you like. So I'm gonna get my gloves on and get these things seasoned. All right, so I got my gloves on, about ready to get these things seasoned, but before I do, I just wanna talk about these meat elitists who are all over the internet. They know the absolute right way to cook everything. And I will tell you that there are some wrong ways to cook things, that's absolutely true. But when it comes to one singular right way to season and cook most proteins, that's absolutely not true. There's many right ways. So take some chances, experiment, and find out what you like best. It's not only just about what you like, but it's also about what your guests like. So my family doesn't like a lot of spicy stuff. I do, but it doesn't make any sense for me to cook spicy food to season this with high heat if my kids, my wife, my crew here today won't eat it. So with that said, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's get started. As some of you at home see, this might look like a lot of seasoning, but it's really not. You really want to get this thoroughly coated. It's a, actually a big mistake I see a lot of uh, people who are just getting started make. They don't put enough seasoning on it. So go ahead and coat this thoroughly all the way across. So these ribs are fully seasoned. We're ready to get them on the smoker back there. I know some of you at home are probably wondering why wrap your ribs at all? Well, this is a technique commonly referred to as the Texas crutch, and it really um, helps, uh, I think, retain some additional moisture and speed up the cooking process. But the bottom line is you don't have to wrap them. I see many barbecuers who don't wrap at all, but for me, I do prefer it. It gets them done a little bit faster and 
that as they're wrapped, it really is a, almost like a braising process. Really helps tenderize that meat. Now, I don't like my ribs fall off the bone tender. I do like a little bit of bite. I'll get more to that at the end of the video, but for now, let's get these on the smoker. these ribs off the smoker. They were on for just a little over two hours. Uh, hit that internal temperature. Now we're ready to wrap. One thing I forgot to mention prior to putting them on the smoker was that I do spritz these every hour. I prefer to use apple juice, but I don't have any. So today I use OJ. In any event, I like to keep a little bit of moisture on those ribs as they cook. Why? Because smoke loves wet meat. I think it adheres to it a little bit better. So that's why I did that. Just wanted to mention it. Now we're ready to get these wrapped up. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is uh, throw down some butter in here. I should also mention I'm using two pieces of foil. You'll see that. And the reason that I'm doing that is because foil can rip. And what we really want to do when we wrap is create a brazing effect. If we get a hole in that foil, guess what? All the steam is going to go out through that hole. So I've always used two pieces of foil. Um, but I just want to go on the record and say I'm only going to use one piece of butcher paper because it doesn't tear and rip like foil does. So the first thing you've seen, I have some butter down here. Next, we're going to go ahead and get down just a little bit of brown sugar. Again, this is all personal preference. Season your ribs how you like, how you prefer. Also, to get some moisture in there for the braising process, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with some OJ. Now we're gonna take these ribs meat side down, just place them down like this, and wrap them up. And you really wanna have more foil than less. The last thing you wanna do is tear away some foil and have it not cover the ribs. Next, I'm gonna get it nice and airtight right over here on the side so we can keep all that moisture in as it cooks. And we'll get this side as well. Really nice and tight. And it's all wrapped up and ready to go back on the grill. Next, we're gonna follow the exact same process, but with this peach butcher paper. So I just wanna point your attention. There really uh, is no waxy side. Um, and we're just gonna see if there's any difference in the results. Throw down a couple pieces of butter again. Butter is gonna help provide some richness and uh, some moisture, orange juice. And now, meat side down, bone side up. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these things wrapped up. And the key with butcher paper is getting a nice and tight wrap on it. That way, that way. Now, they're gonna go back on the smoker at 225 degrees. And we're gonna leave them there for an hour. We had these on the smoker wrapped for about an hour. Uh, the first thing I want to bring your attention to is look at the exterior of this paper. It absorbed a lot of the uh, liquid uh, that was in there. So let's open it up and see how it looks on the inside. All right, so we got those out. As you can see, that moisture takes some of the bark off of them, which is why we're going to get them back on the smoker after this. But let's see how our comparison ribs look over here. Well, you can see a lot more steam escaping already. This was a much tighter seal, but I wonder how that's going to impact the final flavor. Okay, and this is just a little trick I learned from our friend uh, Rob McGee, uh, head chef at Q39 in Kansas City, very well-known steakhouse. So after you take these out after the wrap, 
you lose a lot of seasoning in those juices. So just go ahead and apply just a little bit more to it. He does this with his brisket, but we're gonna do it here as well. A little bit more. We already had a lot on there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get him back in that smoker for about another 30 minutes. Let that bark go ahead and firm up. Now, if you're wondering why these are maybe moving a little bit at a faster pace than they might for you at home, well, as you can see, it's really sunny out there. If you'll remember, I set that pit to 225 degrees, but the temperature gauge at the top is showing closer to 250 because of all the sunlight it's getting. So I'm not gonna leave them in there for another hour. We're just gonna do another half hour, get some bark on there, and then my favorite part, we're gonna test the results. All right, guys, so we've taken these ribs off. They've been sitting out now for about 10 minutes. So let's just talk about some of the differences I'm seeing. I mean, first off, I, I just want to say that these ribs took about four and a half hours to get uh, fully completed. Uh, that, as I mentioned earlier in the vid, that mid-afternoon sun on the pit really started to drive up the temperature closer to 250. That's part of it. They were about two and a half hours unwrapped, an hour wrapped, and then about uh, 35 minutes, again, unwrapped in the smoker to help build that bark. And so I would say kind of they're, they're really, to my eye, indistinguishable. But if I had to, you know, try to pull out some differences, the one thing I would point out is that this one, our foil lined, and as you can see, I, I line these up really easily at home so you guys can see which is which. Uh, it looks like this portions of this foil wrapped one have a slightly better bark relative to the uh, butcher paper. Now, I, I really didn't expect that. I expected the butcher paper to retain a little nicer bark due to less moisture. Down here, we have some good bark, and down here, it's just real thin, so that got a little bit burnt. That's fine. Um, the other thing, if I had to point to a difference, is look at those ribs and how they stick out on the foil versus this one over here, wrapped in peach butcher paper. So that's really interesting. I think what happened is that this foil is obviously a tighter wrap, creating more of a, a braise and uh, you know causing that to pull back a little bit further. One other thing I want to mention, just a quick tip so that you know when your ribs are done. A lot of people, like I mentioned earlier, cook to time, three, two, one, and all that. I, I tried not to do that. A good tip to tell if your ribs are completed is that when you pick them up, that, that bark will start to crack. So anyway, let's cut in, see how they taste. I'm just gonna go right in the middle here. All right, so let's just take a closer look right here. I used apple wood. Again, you can see some of that smoke ring coming through right there, not a ton of it on the sides. I think that has to do with it, the uh, pit was a little hotter than I expected. But now for the moment of truth, right in. Mmm. It's got a little bit of bite to it. Wow. I, this might be a two hour review, guys. I am just gonna continue to eat this thing, but I'll put it down just so I make good use of your time. I'll get back to eating them all after the shoot's over. Now, let's take a look at this one right here. This awesome cut rib that I did a horrible job of cutting, but let's see how it tastes. Wow. Also, an excellent rib. It's got a little bit of bite, but boy, are they both tender. Wow, guys, I'm really surprised. Look, I mean, both of those ribs tasted like they were from the same rat. I tasted no difference at all. The only visual difference I really saw, besides a little bit more bark on the foil ones and the fact that the, the uh, bones were pulled back a little bit more, I, I don't know. Maybe if I ate my way through both of these ribs, I'd find out maybe that this one had a little bit more bite to it, but I can't say that for sure right now. What I can say is that uh, despite all the bickering back and forth on the internet about foil or peach butcher paper, I have to tell you guys, it's almost indistinguishable. I think that maybe, and I haven't done the research, maybe uh, butcher paper is a little cheaper because you buy it in a bigger roll versus foil being more expensive, but maybe that's it. I really don't have anything else to say. I'm pretty surprised by this. I 
kind of thought from all the information I read online that the butcher paper would turn out better, but also I want to say one more thing for everyone who's probably going to com complain in the comments below about me using uh, orange juice. You cannot taste it. They're just tender, good, delicious ribs, just like you guys want to make at home. If you like this video, you know the drill. Go ahead and hit that big thumbs up like button, or even better, subscribe to our channel. We release a new video every single week all about cooking meat made easy. Also, we have some really exciting things planned for this channel that are gonna drop in August and September of this year. So stay tuned as we continue to turn up the tasty. I'll see you guys next time.